You know, I don't even know if this holds up anymore because I haven't read <laughs> Spider-Man since Brand New Day, so I have no clue what's... I mean, I know, like, Jonah ran for mayor, and he shook Oh, he, he is mayor. He is he mayor, is mayor. And, um, I, I keep up on it sometimes, and I feel masochistic, so... Yeah, um, and I know uh, uh, Spidey shook Obama's hand. Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal, a big deal. Yeah, and um, and you told me about it, Omit, um, oh, most God. of it, I'm but... Oh, um, God, I'm sorry for that, yeah. But, uh... uh but I, I don't even remember now. But, okay, so I promised to tell you my plan to bring Ben back. And I even uh, retconned it so that it could work with Brand New Day. So it could work with Brand New Day. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Be ready for this. He's been promising this forever. He's gonna Yeah, and I'm so tired so. and I haven't thought about it in months. So uh, we're going to try this, though. All right, so... Uh, Here's the thing. It all comes back to the other. So hopefully you've read the other. Otherwise, this won't make any sense. In the other, a quick recap, in the other, Peter Parker dies and comes back because the spider god brings him back. I mean, that's essentially in a nutshell. So my thing is, if, if Ben is an absolute clone of him, and he's a clone of him, <coughs> excuse me, after spider god gave him powers, there's really no reason that he couldn't come back from the dead as well in a webbing thing somewhere under a pier... <laughs> uh, a smoke snap yeah as is no. his want I guess um so if if that can happen and and you can either retcon one or two things one you know he's like well we killed the we, we, I I can't even remember what that like Osborne was the thing they were fighting I think oh during the clone song yeah stuff? yeah, yeah or, it was Osborne you know yes. essentially uh, you could do like a flashback and it's like him coming back long after you know shortly after he died um, and he's like well, Pete's life finally seems to be taking shape. I'm just going to let him be. Though, by this point, that seems not to make any sense. So, you could say, like, okay, well, he's a clone. He's kind of a copy. He's not as awesome or 100% as Peter Parker, so it took a little bit of time to come back. So, my idea is you do, like, a, a, a six-issue limited mini because that's what Marvel loves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we charge, like, six ninety nine a piece. Because <laughs> you fucking cheap, you'll buy it. Um, and <laughs> each one, each one has a a, a a a thematic title and tone to it. And the last two would be part five, power; part six, responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, like one, I don't know, family, blah 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 blah. And we go through times in Peter's life where uh, Ben has been on the sidelines and then uh, does something without Peter knowing that saves the day. And the end to this, of course, because of the retcon I had to do after Brand New Day is him solving Brand New Day. So, uh. be ready here. Okay, so, one of the flashbacks, and I mean, these can be fleshed out, it's, it's whatever. Oh! <laughs> J. Michael Straczynski uh, mentioned this in his book on writing. If you ever talk about ideas that a company could use, um, they... I, it, technically, if Marvel were to use this, they could sue me. So as of right now, <laughs> this acts as a written uh, statement. I will I will sign a statement and send it to you. But this is myself, Michael T. Bradley. I affirm that I am here of sound mind and body. I will not sue you if you use these ideas. I will actually start buying Spider-Man again if you use these ideas. Please, <laughs> please feel free to use these ideas. Peter David writing them preferably. Anyway, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um... You said to get that out of the way. So, um, so one of the flashbacks that we have is Peter, uh, like at the end of Peter's conversation with the Spider God, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I guess I'm gonna go live." Now. I don't, I can't, I, I didn't like the other, but we have to use it. He goes away, and then uh, Ben steps out from behind the Spider God, and he's like, "But you didn't tell him everything." And the Spider God's like, "You know, in time, in time." And uh, so we build up, da 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 da. So we build up that, that Ben is waiting for his time to come back because the Spider God tells him that he's going to be needed at some point. So Ben comes back, and he remembers everything because Mephisto's world-altering, incredible powers that we've never seen before don't affect him because he's off in Spider God realm. So he comes back, and he's like, Peter, I have to talk to you. And Peter's like, who the fuck are you and why do you look like me? <laughs> so we get to do the clone saga again. Yay! <laughs> because everybody loved that. Mm. Um, so uh, then you could... And, of course, you can take that bit out. You don't have to do uh, uh, brand... You don't have to fix Brand New Day with it because supposedly Omit did that. Yeah, great fucking job. No, there, no, it, it, um, it didn't. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> essentially we've just backed ourselves into more of a corner and blah, 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 blah. 
I actually have this idea. I've told you about this. I want to try. Uh, take the 2001, I think it's 2001 annual in which they break up. No, no. And then ignore everything until Brand New Day starts. And it almost works. Granted, you have to ignore the fact that Harry's back from the dead. But that could happen in the Marvel Universe. So it, beyond that, it almost well, works. except for, and this is something I was thinking about, Harry dies after the breakup. Harry dies oh, when does he's married. He? Yeah, yeah, he Sweet. definitely dies when he's married. Because when you mention that before, I'm like, but he's, and, you know, he dies. It seems he like dies, that's He dies during ago, a, the Mattis' run on Spectacular Spider-Man, which is, you know... Yeah, I mean, he dies. He dies after um, uh, Craven's last hunt. He dies after all of right, that. Right, but shindig, the the so. two thousand one annual is when uh, is the end of Howard Mackey's run after the relaunch. Oh, that breakup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. They're, they're, right before they get married, they have this breakup. Oh, yeah. And so I thought you meant that. No, one. no, These no, are the no, two thousand one no. annual. Yeah, yeah. Up, so okay. My, yeah. My bad. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so anyway, so there you go. That's the idea for that. Because of Brand New Day really souring me on comics completely because Spider-Man's my favorite character has been since uh, uh, 97 I think when I started reading the run from the beginning um, because that just soured me on it completely and for every you know my feelings are Peter Parker is, is dead now um, I uh, I got out of comics uh, a lot and I was kind of like stra struggling with them uh, I was reading more DC for a while then it was like, the goddamn Superman stuff was really good, but it had been going on for like a year. Now this, um, is the, this is the Planet Krypton stuff. Yeah, the, like about. James Robinson, yeah. Rucka joined eventually, and it just felt like they were spinning all this stuff and it was never going to come to any sort of conclusion. And then... Or new Krypton, sorry. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Dick Grayson became Batman, and I was like, well, we've seen that story. Uh, it was called Prodigy. It just felt like... Wow, God, everything is something we've already seen before, done before. I'm just tired of it. So, I actually, uh, the only comic that I have bought in the past two years or more uh, was uh, the final volume of Scott Pilgrim. And that's been it. So, I'm, but, I'm but. out of comics. So, anyway, so that's my side of things. Just to get out of the way really quickly. Um, for you, what, what, what have your comic experience has been like? Uh, and, and especially Brian Michael Bendis' master plan and how it played out. Um, okay, well, Civil War basically drove me right into the arms of DC. I'd been kind of 50-50 between both of them for the most part, but Civil War just kind of, like, totally broke me on. Well, much like you, Civil War is like, eh, but one more day totally broke me on, and I'm like, screw this, I'm just going to DC, which I've absolutely loved, and, and most of the problems that you've had with DC, I haven't, so all's fair. Um, and I won't, I won't get into the uh, quibbling over Prodigal, over what really ends up happening there, but it's alright. I mean, it's like, I just feel like Prodigal's different, but eh, it doesn't matter. I easily see your point on that and, and accept it. Um, uh, so it's only recently that I actually started reading, uh, really starting to try to read... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, just ah. one quick note mm. there. Uh, I'm sure you have a point. Part of the other reason that got me out of it was because of the uh, 399 comics. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Because it was like, with Superman and Batman... The, the, both of them had at least one title that notched up to four dollars. Then it was like I, I started reading Doom Patrol, and by like issue two, it was up to four dollars. So that was another part of it. So anyway, and, yeah. and actually, I was gonna mention something about that in my my little history here. So only recently have I started kind of getting back into Marvel again, and mostly that's just reading through trades and, and whatnot, as opposed to actually like buying monthlies. Um, about the only big exception to that is I have a soft spot in my heart for Hawkeye. So any like the Hawkeye Mockingbird series and and Hawkeye's mini that's come out. I've and buying those, and um, uh, all of a sudden I've, I've discovered I really like Jonathan Hickman, so I've been reading his FF run. Um, uh, what, what are you reading? Are you still reading Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, yeah, and then, well, it's it's not around anymore. They just oh, do, it's it's like they do little pop, little minis with that out, the Annihilators, so that's true. So so I've been very niche, like most of the stuff until recently has been very niche. Um, uh, I just literally this month started, ended up reading, and this is back to the price point here, um, uh, Uncanny X-Men, because, uh, ah, Kieran Gillian? I cannot say his name. I'm not positive how to pronounce Kieran, it. Kieran Gillian? Is, is that Sorry, right? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I actually really, really dig his stuff. Magneto's in the X-Men, which is kind of, like, where I like him at, and, um, uh, Gillian, Gillian, however you say his last name, um, uh, is... He rocks the Namor, which is awesome. So it's like two characters that I usually dislike, which is Namor, who who I have not liked anything. I have not liked anything done with Namor since John Burns' run back in like the, the late eighties, early nineties. Um, uh, it was I just, a, I just remember him from Civil War, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
the, the best okay this this is this is how he writes Namor um, uh, Jillian does is there's this line in one in the point one bullshit stupid point one stuff anyway issue where um uh, somebody causes an earthquake and Namor's like um uh, the power to shake the earth is is you know limited to only my er, um, the, uh, the power to shake the earth is is mine to command and only I allow that to happen to one woman at a time and then there's like this pause where he's like in, and then kind of mutters unless she has experimental friends. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. So, and then, and then my favorite Magneto ever was back during the 80s, during Secret Wars 2 and whatnot, when he was, you know, like, is he good, is he bad, but he's working with the X-Men. So he's got both of those in there. And so I'm like, wow, I'm really digging a lot of the storylines, and he's talking about, Aston and he's basically, it's a sequel to Whedon's Astonishing X-Men run, this first story arc. So I'm like, wow, this is happy. That point one issue was two ninety nine. I ordered the next two after that. Blah blah blah. Those are three ninety nine. Didn't realize that at the time. So I'm like, screw it. I'm gonna finish up the story arc and I'm dropping it because it's like I love the writer. I li actually like the characters that's going on. I like the arc, but I'm uh, I'm not paying four bucks. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually as as a, as a uh, another addendum. This has been so long ago. I've forgotten it. I, I was the last comic that I was holding out and reading longer than anything else was two thousand AD, which I still absolutely love, but. Because the dollar kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker, I think it's like twenty dollars a month to read two thousand AD oh. now, um, and I was just like, I can't, I, I, I can't uh, justify that expense. So. I finished up Siege actually a couple of weeks back, and and I saw Bendis' master plan that he claimed existed from uh, New Avengers. It was supposed to go through Civil War and go through all of this stuff. And I, I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't supposed you know, Siege isn't the end, you know, because they're always constantly doing new stuff, but it really felt like Siege was at least the end point for that, that concept that he had there. 